Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Millicent Marcus, a professor of Italian at Yale. She specializes in Italian culture from the interdisciplinary perspectives of literature, history, and film. She is the author of several books on Italian film, as well as many journal articles. Today we'll talk with Professor Marcus about her research on the anti-mafia martyr genre in Italian film. Welcome, Professor Marcus. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, what an interesting topic. Um, let's begin uh, you know, with an overview of the genre. Tell us about it. OK, well, it, um, it really begins in the early 1980s, which is the time of the most intensive mafia war against the state. Okay. And it includes about 11 films. That's by my count. There may be more. Uh -huh. And um, they, it, they include mainly with only one exception, actually, biographical portraits of anti-mafia activists mm -hmm. who died uh, in, in their struggle against the mafia. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the, the range of people included in this is very important uh, because we have three of the films are about judges, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, then there's one about a labor organizer, one about a chief of the Carabinieri, that's the Italian police, mm -hmm. one about a journalist, one about a cultural organizer, one about a priest, mm -hmm. and one about a mafia daughter who turns state's evidence. So this is sort of the range that uh -huh. we're getting. Very diverse. Yeah, yeah, very diverse. Okay, and this is in Italy, specifically in Sicily, or are there any other parts of Italy? Good question. This is, um, in Sicily, and really mainly Palermo, not completely, also Corleone, which uh -huh. is a name that uh -huh. the audience might uh, recognize. And there's one of the figures is actually from Naples, and therefore a victim of the Camorra, mm -hmm. which is the Neapolitan Mafia. Okay, and these films, they're not documentaries, they're actually um, dramas somewhat based on reality. Exactly, okay. exactly. that's a very important okay. point that these are historical figures mm -hmm. and their stories might be a little bit uh, romanzate, as we say in Italian, or uh, romanticized mm -hmm. or novelized. I think that's the, yeah, but they're all based on historical fact and that's okay. very important. Okay. <coughs> and what led you to be interested in this? Well, um, in the year 2000, 2001, I noticed that two very brilliant films came out the very same year on anti-mafia martyrs. Uh, one called uh, The 100 Steps that I want to talk more about in, mm -hmm. in depth in a minute, about um, Peppino Impastato, a cultural organizer, and the other called Placido Rizzotto, about a labor organizer who was killed in the late 1940s. Mm -hmm. And I saw the convergence of these two films in 2000, 2001. I thought, hmm, something's going on here. Mm -hmm. And then in looking more closely at it, I realized there had been several films preceding it within this genre. And then since then, a whole series of films uh, following it. Mm -hmm. And this is a genre that I've just sort of myself identified. I don't know if other film scholars agree with me. Uh, and it, the label is, is mine. But mm -hmm. I think it's very valid and very legitimate in terms of defining this particular body mm -hmm. of work. And how do you find the films? I mean, you are um, a professor of Italian, so I imagine y you are interested in Italy. Um, so are these films primarily released in Italy, um, or can you also find them here in the United States? Alas, uh, many of them are not accessible to American audiences, okay. which is really a pity. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are. The 100 Steps, for example, that I'll talk about. Uh, but most of them are not. Most of them are not even um, translated. You know, they don't have in English subtitles. They're in PAL, which is the European format, so they mm -hmm. can't even be shown on DVDs here. And so part of my mission, I feel, mm -hmm. is to introduce the um, American and English-speaking audiences to this very important body of work. Mm -hmm. Because so often the mafia, you know, the, the, the media are so obsessed with with the mafia yes. itself yes. and have fueled this kind of mm -hmm. obsession and sensationalized the phenomenon. But uh, these films show a very, the other side. That, right, uh, right. And a side that um, I don't think many people know exists exactly. here in this country. Exactly. Very interesting. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about um, 100 Steps. OK, so this is the film of, um, his name is uh, Peppino Impastato. Mm -hmm. 
And this young man lived in Chinisi, which is right outside of Palermo, mm -hmm. uh, right where the airport of Palermo is located. His father was, uh, had been patronized by the mafia. The mafia had sort of bought him a pizzeria. So, uh, so the, the family of Peppino was really indebted to the mafia. Right. Their uncle, who lived right down the street, was a big boss. His name was Gaetano Badalamenti. And the title of the film, 100 Steps, um, refers to the fact that the Peppino's family lived literally 100 steps down the street okay. from this mafia boss. So the point of the film is that the mafia is so sort of integrated into everyone's life mm -hmm. that you simply cannot escape it. But Peppino's point was to resist it. And so he started a kind of youth movement, and he did it through a, uh, the medium of radio, because in the 1970s, there was a movement called Radio Libera, mm -hmm. where anybody could just set up, you know, an antenna and mm -hmm. um, whatever equipment and begin to broadcast, mm -hmm. and he did. And he, he played rock and roll music, and they talked about the sexual revolution, but his main point was to ridicule the mafia. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't ridicule the mafia in public. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know what's good for you. Mm, it sounds it didn't, dangerous. Didn't stop him. And he proceeded on this path and uh, ultimately became very political. He was a member of the Communist Party, but he felt that the Communists were too ineffectual. And then he became a candidate for the uh, Democrazia Proletaria, which was further to the left. Mm -hmm. And during that campaign, he was assassinated. By the Mafia? By the Mafia. Okay. Um, I am wondering, since the Mafia basically bought the pizzeria for his family, what turned him against the Mafia? What a great question. His own sense of what was right and what was wrong. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was just um, a rebel from birth. And he was also very, very educated. His father, his parents were not. They were very simple. Mm -hmm. And so through education, through humanist culture, he got certain values about what the civil order should be mm -hmm. and what it shouldn't be. And this empowered him. And uh, he became a very charismatic leader. Mm -hmm. When he died, his funeral turned into a protest movement and a call to arms. And we get the beginning of a grassroots movement, which still today uh, has an office called the Centro Peppino Impastato. Mm -hmm dedicated uh, to him and his memory. Okay. I am wondering how, um, how well received these films are. Well, that film was uh, very acclaimed, mm -hmm. both by critics and by the general audience. Mm -hmm. It became, and uh, the filmmaker, it, it, it became a launching pad for the filmmaker's career. His name was um, Tullio Giordana, uh, Marco Tullio Giordana, okay. and the main actor, Luigi Locascio, who played Peppino, has gone on to great stardom as mm -hmm. a result. So that film did really, really well. Other films have been less noticed, mm -hmm. uh, less well distributed, except for the film that I'm going to tell you about. Okay, eventually. tell us about it. Okay, you ready? Yeah. Right. So the film that I'm working on now in my research, mm -hmm. and it fascinates me, is part of the genre and not part of the genre. Okay. It's part of it in that the director's name is uh, Pier Francesco Di Liberto, was the assistant director to Giordana mm -hmm. for The 100 Steps. But he went on to become a big TV celebrity uh, among a sort of a young demographic and on TV shows like The Equivalent of Candid Camera, mm -hmm. where he plays a really goofy kind of guy. And then later his own television show called Il Testimone, which means the witness. Okay. And that was on MTV. So you can imagine again the kind of public sure. that he attracted. Um, and in that TV show, he did a series of interviews and really created a very powerful public persona, the huge following. Mm -hmm. But as a guy who was kind of funny and zany, etc. And then he decided to make his first film. And his first film is called The Mafia Only Kills in the Summer. It is a romantic comedy, heavily autobiographical, mm -hmm. because De Liberto himself grew up in uh, Palermo during the years of this most intense mafia war mm -hmm. against the state. 
And so he embodies himself in this little boy named Arturo. By the way, Arturo is conceived uh, on the same night that there is a mafia attack on the apartment building where his parents are conceiving him. Okay. And um, to be graphic, uh, uh, there is an egg and a flotilla of sperm, and those sperm are turned away because the attack on the building causes the building to shake. Uh -huh. But one little sperm lags behind <laughs> and <laughs> didn't know what was going on and he's the sperm who pierces the egg uh -huh. and thus begins the life of little Arturo Gianmarese. As a result of this, as a small child, he is very sensitive to the mafia presence in his midst. Okay. There's a kind of paranormal sensitivity. He's very slow to begin talking and his parents are trying to get him to extract a, at least a mama from him. But the first word he utters is when a priest comes to visit their house who happens to have mafia ties. Mm -hmm. And so you can guess what his first word was, mafia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess. I know, you got it. <laughs> so uh, this young boy though, it's, it's, as I told you, it's a romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. He falls in love with a young girl named Florida and he's courting her. This little kid is courting her. But every time he tries to impress her or woo her, something happens in the public sphere to thwart uh, his, his romantic mm -hmm. hopes. And what happens in the public sphere is a mafia assassination. To give you an example, so he writes on the pavement in front of her apartment house. With chalk, he writes this impassioned love, love note to her. Mm -hmm. It just so happens she never gets to see it because a mafia, anti-mafia judge living in the apartment is assassinated right there. Okay. Things like this are happening. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Quite the coincidence. Quite the coincidence. And all these coincidences happen. Uh, when he grows up, he's finally able to win her over and they marry and they have a little boy. And the end of the film, so the, most of the film has been light and fluffy mm -hmm. and uh, playful with these interventions of, of mafia history. But at the very end, there's this beautiful, beautiful conclusion. And this is what links the film to the anti-mafia martyr genre, mm -hmm. is that Arturo takes his little boy and takes him to visit all of the plaques throughout Palermo dedicated to the martyrdom of the various figures we've seen throughout mm -hmm. the film before and more. And this little boy, and you see various cuts of the visits to the plaques, uh, and the little boy get, is a little older and a little older, but he can never really understand. Mm -hmm. And yet what you see is that Arturo is bent on transmitting this legacy to the new generation. Mm -hmm. And it becomes very, very, very serious at the end. And it becomes a series of memorials mm -hmm. to the martyrs of the cause. Right, right. So uh, this film sounds very different than the other ones in terms of it is light um, exactly. in, up until the end. Um, the Mafia is very much alive still on Sicily. Yes. yes. Um, do you think that these films, um, you know, will have any bearing on um, people's outlook on the Mafia? Well, that's a great question, and I, I have uh, a two-part answer to it. Okay. Your point that the mafia is very much alive comes out in one of Di Liberto's um, episodes of Il Testimone, mm -hmm. where he interviews a bunch of young people who've decided to band together against the fact that the mafia requires that merchants, shopkeepers, pay a tribute, protection money, mm -hmm. and if they don't, they're in trouble. And this protection money in the slang of Palermo is pizzo, P-I-Z-Z-O, mm -hmm. not to be mistaken for pizza. Uh -huh. And this group has bonded together in a movement called Adio Pizzo, or goodbye to this tribute. Right. Um, so it's very much alive and well. The second point that you made are, are these, the question, are these films able to change the way people think? And this, I want to take back to, an, to the entire Italian film tradition, starting with the post-war movement of neorealism, mm -hmm. which some of your um, viewers might have seen films like Rome, Open City with Anna Magnani, 
or Bicycle Thief. Mm -hmm. um, these films were the outgrowth of the resistance movement during World War II. And these films, the resistance movement itself, after the shame of fascism and the devastation of the war, th this movement wanted to, wanted Italy to be reborn, mm -hmm. um, a, a rebirth of social justice. And the neorealist movement grows out of this. And the idea is that these films will be an intervention in the life of the country, that it will point out social injustice and that it will instill the desire in audiences to do something about right. it, to act. The anti-mafia martyr film is part of this tradition. Mm -hmm. And I feel very strongly that, um, that this genre is really about, um, really is a call to arms. Mm -hmm. The 100 Steps ends, I told you, with the funeral of Peppino, and it becomes a protest rally. Mm -hmm. And it's a challenge to the audience, right. especially in this new millennium, when the young people don't have that kind of revolutionary fervor mm -hmm. that we saw, for example, in the 1970s, um, even in the 1990s, um, when we see this grassroots movement coming up. Uh, the, the, those grassroots, the grass has withered. Mm -hmm. So these filmmakers are appealing to the public and saying, we have to act. And as one critic wrote, the film shows that it is still possible to rebel. Fascinating. Thank you so much for being here today and sharing some of your work. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. For more information about Professor Marcus and her research, please visit our website at macmillanreport.yale.edu. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale. Thank you.